Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the second and last video in the restoration, or the attempted restoration, of two of these Vermona MV3 amps. What you're seeing here is the one that I've managed to save. I will be showing you the other one in a moment. But as you can see, I have completed it. And I've got to tell you, this thing did not take much more than I'd done already. But before we carry on, I'd like to thank the sponsor of the video, PCB Way. You'll find them at pcbway.com. Whenever you see one of my projects come to life, there's uh, one thing you can be certain of, and that is that the boards came from PCB Way. I've been using them for quite a few years now, and they've never let me down. Uh, the quality is excellent, pricing is amazing, and the delivery times are really fast. I usually get my boards in a few days, and I live on the island of Madeira, which is pretty remote. I've also tried their 3D printing services for some custom enclosures and difficult to get parts, and they turned out beautifully. Right now, PCB Way is running their eighth project design contest. This is in collaboration with Mauser, as well as the Mascot 3D Printing Design Contest, and both giving you the chance to win some great prizes. So check them out at pcbway.com. You'll be surprised by the enormous scope of the services they offer and see how professional your new project can look. You may recall that uh, in the first video, I focused on from here forward, from the preamp forward. I did nothing about the inputs of the channels. The one is the uh, ECC83 12AX7, this one is an EF86. Slightly different tonal uh, characteristics. Quite honestly, I'm not an expert at uh, discerning different tones, but the people in the know tell me that um, this thing is a lot different to that one because the EF86 produces better harmonics. Anyway, that is for you to decide. But let's see what we've got here. These two front ends did not take much in terms of restoration. They took a lot of checking, a lot of cleaning, but not much in terms of restoration. In fact, other than the two jacks, the two input jacks, only two components were changed, and that was this capacitor here, which is a B-plus filtering for the final two um, input tubes. I replaced that. It was a 1 microfarad. I replaced it with 2.2 microfarad, 450 volts. It just gives it a little bit more smoothing. Other than that one, this one was replaced. It's the cathode bypass capacitor for the EF86. That was a 20, 20 microfarad at 3 volts. I replaced it with a 22 microfarad, slightly, well, quite a bit higher voltage. And then, of course, the jacks were replaced as well. Those two jacks, I replaced uh, the old ones with two cliff-type jacks, exactly the same as the, uh, the speaker jack, and they fit beautifully in there. And then, of course, all the components were checked. The uh, capacitors, the film caps were all checked. They were lifted. I lifted one leg. I checked for capacitance, and I also checked for leakage on the capacitance leakage tester. They all measured fine. Then the resistors were all within about 10%, so they are fine. Therefore, there's not much to report in terms of uh, damage over there. I thought that perhaps one or both of these uh, input tubes would be gone. I was pleasantly surprised to find that they both are working perfectly. And that's a relief because obviously tubes are getting rather expensive these days. So let's just have a quick look at the schematic and I'll show you what's been done. As usual, I've done the, the painting trick using the uh, PDF, and it makes life a lot easier. So you know what you've checked, and you know what you've replaced, and so on and so forth. So here we are. This whole section had no component failures. This is the uh, ECC83 one. One of the triodes has the input tube, and it goes to its own stack, and then there's the another gain stage over there. So you're using both uh, triodes in that ECC83 uh, container or envelope. And then, of course, the EF86 is a single tube. It had two capacitors on here, two electrolytics that I replaced. This is that uh, one microfarad. It uh, filters the B+. Plus. You can see the B+, plus is coming along here. And there's another resistor to the screen voltage over here. And it's filtered with that one microfarad. I put 2.2 on there. That one there is the cathode bypass, and that was replaced with a 22 microfarad. So pretty straightforward. It's... Um, a very simple picture for a hell of a lot of testing. It's always the same. Anyway, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to power it up. And before I start doing some audio testing, I want to see what voltages I'm getting because I'm, uh, I've been using this at 200 volts. Uh, I've set the Variac to 200 volts as my mains input, my mains level. I want to see, now that I've got all the tubes in place and all the tubes are drawing current as they should be, I want to see what happens uh, when I start upping that voltage to 220 and then ultimately to 230, which is our uh, supply voltage in Madeira, I want to see what I get over here. Now, it says here on the schematic 310 and the B2 plus 300. 
I'm expecting a bit higher for two reasons. One, usually these voltages were measured with a um, fairly low impedance uh, voltmeter. So you would read uh, lower voltages. Now we're using a digital multimeter and it's got a much, much higher input impedance. So generally the voltages will show as higher. And the other reason is because we are working, this was for a 220 volt system and I am feeding it 230 or will be feeding it 230, I expect this to go up as well. So let's try that. Right, I've got a speaker connected. I've got the dim bulb in line with all the lamps included. So 200 watts of lamps included. There is some restriction, but not too much. I've got the Variac at 200 volts. And let's see what we get on the B1+. Plus. Now, I do expect it to go up a bit more than usual because the tubes have not started conducting yet. We'll give them a little moment and see what that comes down to. I've got the volumes on zero in both cases. And it's come down. I think it's settled. It's down to 260 volts. I do hear a buzz. Doesn't surprise me because this whole thing is open. There's no shielding yet. So let me start. Well, first of all, let me remove, bypass the dim bulb. That immediately goes up a bit. Now I'm going to bring it up to 210. Well, it's actually 215. 294. Let me take it up to 220 volts AC on the mains. 302. Remember, we're looking for 310. Let's go to 230. There's 230 on the mains, and we've got 316 volts. Remember, I'm expecting 310. That's pretty good. I think this will keep going up a little bit, but something else I want to try. I can hear the buzz. I don't know if you can. I want to see if messing around with that pot at the back has any effect. Now, let's try that. Yep, that's definitely higher there. That seems to be the quietest it's been. I do expect buzz because this thing is sitting out there in the open on a workbench with all sorts of stuff switched on. So it's not surprising. We'll only be able to judge it once we have the, uh, the chassis enclosed because it is a metal enclosure and it's earthed and all that jazz. Oh, there is one other reason. This thing's connected to my isolation transformer, which means that there's no earth. But now that I've got this on 230, I can connect it straight to the mains. Let me do that. So it's now connected straight to the mains. Yeah, definitely some buzzing. Let me see if this makes any difference now. Ha! Oh man, you got to hear this. Let me take the microphone and put it right by the speaker. Listen to this. That's what that thing is for. Makes a huge difference. This thing is now connected straight to the mains. The mains earth comes into play and therefore that starts having a bigger effect. Okay, I'm going to give it a try. Let me uh, connect the guitar here and embarrass myself. I've plugged into the uh, channel one, the year 36 channel. And let's see what we get. Oh, this thing gets loud. This gets loud very, very fast. That's the treble. Oh, a lot of bass. <laughs> no bass at all. So, leave it in the middle. That sounds pretty good. This is no distortion. It's very clean. And of course, the problem here is if I wanted distortion, I would have to jack this up 
and it would kill my ears. No, I can't do that. This would be um, to get the preamp tubes into distortion, the F86, and then possibly the, um, the output tubes into distortion. You've got to jack this way up. And my friend is using this not as a guitar amplifier, he's using it as a... Um, how did he describe it? I think he said it basically colorizes or uh, shapes the tone of the signal going through. So he'll actually be using this in a line level situation where the output from the speaker will go to an attenuator and that attenuator has got a um, you know a lower lower level speaker output it's also got a line output and that's how he's going to use it so what i'm doing here is something he's never going to do which is use it with the guitar really That sounds pretty good. That sounds really good actually. Let's try the um, 12AX6 or the ECC83 channel. Yeah, that sounds okay. Very loud again. Let me lower the volume on the guitar, which is what I've done. the idea. Treble. Bass. There's a lot of bass on this thing. And why? Because that output transformer is very, very big. So it's obviously coming down to very low frequencies, which some of the, the smaller push-pull transformers would not do. All right, folks, well, I'm going to put this in the enclosure. I'm going to put the back on. Just do a quick test again to see if we got rid of some of the buzz. There's very little noise on here. Very, very little. And then um, I'll show you the comparison between this one and the one that, uh, unfortunately, was unsavable. And here she is, done. As I mentioned, I uh, replaced the jacks. I put a washer that I 3D printed to make sure that they stay tight in the hole because the holes were bigger than the jacks themselves. The um, cover, this bezel on the uh, fuse holder was cracked so I 3D printed another one. That's a new switch, period correct, but new, working perfectly. The front plate was touched up with black um, acrylic and then sprayed with uh, matte lacquer to make it all uniform. This front was color matched more or less to what we had before and repainted and then I repainted the chassis as well, this metal casing. The colors might not match exactly, they're not supposed to match back to front, but I'm talking about what was here before. But yeah, looking really good, really good. Now let's see what the <laughs> The wayward brother looks like. This looks like two twins that got separated at birth. Let me show you the two side by side. Right, here we have it. One on top of the other. Obviously the restored ones on top. These two look like twins that um, were split at birth. One got adopted by a very wealthy family and the other one wasn't so lucky. So this gives you a real comparison. The other one looked very much, or that one looked very much like this. So the, uh, the makeover did do the job. Let's do the full turnaround. And my friend asked me what I should do with the bottom one. And I said, keep it because there are some parts you can use. Like if you lose a knob or something, the, uh, the tubes are fine. Let me show you the debris that resulted from all this. Here is the fallout. And part of that is not fallout. The tubes seem to be all fine. So these can be reused, used in the in the good one, when those wear out. But other than that, we can see our capacitors, the feet, the rubber feet were completely gone, so I put some new ones in. Actually, this is a 
the only one that's good. The um, jacks, the switch was dead, the filter capacitor. These uh, plugs do not fit on our system over here, one from each. So I'll return those to him as well. So here is the answer to the question I raised in the title of the first video in the series. Can I save these two guitar amps? The answer is yes and no. Saved one, made it work like new, and it sounds really, really good. Obviously, it sounds better if you know how to play guitar, not like me. The other one, unfortunately not. So sometimes you can't have everything you want, but I guess one out of two ain't bad, right? So that's where I'm going to leave it right now. I'm returning this to my buddy tomorrow. He hasn't seen this uh, finished result yet, so he'll be seeing it at the same time as you. So that is it for this uh, little series, and I do hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon PayPal. Links are in the description below. So once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now, and most of all, stay sane.